The Shrine of the Black Madonna Bookstore and Cultural Center was forced to shut down about two years ago because of declining sales. Now, the Detroit landmark on Livernois Avenue is scheduled to reopen next summer after a major renovation. This is a drawing of the new building designed by Hamilton Anderson Associates. In addition to being a retail space, it will serve as a cultural hub for the community. Groundbreaking is planned for next month. Here to tell us more are Candia Milton, who is project coordinator and minister at the Shrine of the Black Madonna Number no. 1, Rhonda Smith, an Emerging Voices journalist who wrote about the development project in Detour Detroit, and Rainy Hamilton, who is principal at Hamilton Anderson Associates. Well, welcome all of you. To Thank, you Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, Candy, I'll start with you. Mm -hmm. uh, talk about uh, the effort to get this going again. Uh, I, I grew up not too far from mm -hmm. there, uh, mm -hmm. just south of Davison uh, on Livernois. Uh, I remember this, this institution back mm -hmm. way when I was a kid. Talk about what happened to close it down and uh, the effort to get it reopened. Yeah, th thank you again for the opportunity to come and, and, and talk about um, this project. We're excited about it. Uh, the Shrine of the Black Madonna, Shrine of the Black Madonna Cultural Center and Bookstore opened in 1970. Mm -hmm. And for the better part of almost 50 years, um, you know, it was a space um, whose mission was to raise the cultural and economic and political uh, awareness of the African American community here in Detroit. And when we opened at that time, it was very innovative. Mm -hmm. um, it was futuristic, if you would, um, as an inviting space. Everything from cultural artifacts to books um, and uh, um, clothing. Mm -hmm. uh, and so access to it was, you know, we, we it was accessible to the community. But what's happened over the years is the way people buy books and the way people buy <laughs> clothes, the way people buy artifacts, you know, has changed. It's changed a lot, it's right? Cha it's changed dramatically. <laughs> and so what, we're, what we've done over the last couple of years is, you know, we've taken a step back, reflected on our impact uh, in the community, um, and now we're sit sitting down and revisioning how we utilize the space to make it more accessible uh, and significant in today's environment. Yeah. Uh, and so we've, we've engaged um, uh, Hamilton Anderson uh, in that process yeah. to help us reimagine the space so that we can be viable in the community for the next 50 plus years. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you are working on lots of different projects around the city. Uh, talk about the reimagining of this space uh, and, and how uh, the physical space and the physical sort of layout of it uh, plays into that design. Yeah, Stephen, uh, thanks for having me this mm -hmm. morning. We're, we're really excited because we get a chance to do what we do, which is to breathe life mm -hmm. back into a building that's been vacant for, for many years. And the building has great bones. Mm -hmm. So what we're looking to do is update the systems and give it a brand new look, uh, create flexible space that can be used for a number of things, for uh, book launches, um, uh, wedding receptions, uh, discussions that are important to the community. Mm -hmm. So we're really excited to be able to put a fresh new look on how the building is going to appear. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, talk about the, the piece that you wrote uh, in Detour about, uh, about the new center. So my job as a Detour Detroit fellow is mm -hmm to write about things that are happening in my community. Mm -hmm. And I live in Russell Woods, where yeah. you grew up. Right. 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 And well, so, I live across. My grandparents Okay, your, gra your grandparents. <laughs> okay. in the other rougher part of uh, <laughs> Detroit. <laughs> well, the sh I've been there 20 years, but a lifelong Detroiter, yeah. and have always utilized and gone to the Shrine of the Black Madonna. So when it closed, after having just weekend hours, I was curious what's going on. Yeah. So when I was charged to be able to find out what's happening in my community. That was the first story that I started to investigate. Is it going to open up again? Right. I, I saw the electricity still on, so I knew <laughs> that it just wasn't bottomed out. Right. But something may be have, um, going on there. So I reached yeah. out and I understand I broke the story. Yeah. So. Yeah. 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 <laughs> uh, talk about that community though. It's changing a lot. Mm -hmm. uh, Russell Woods is changing yes. right now. Uh, we're trying to make change uh, in the home that my family lived in uh, when I was born on Tuxedo just across Livernois from there. Uh, we've got a, a major 
development coming. Uh, the Carpenters Union is building this training center, mm -hmm. $30 million mm -hmm. over there. It, it's going to be a different space A lot of soon. space. The, yeah. We've been meeting, and I'm, I'm very active with the Neighborhood Association, so we've been meeting a lot with city officials mm -hmm. to revitalize Dexter Avenue and, and to just change the spaces, the, the not just the, um, the landscape, but the homes. Yeah. And th there's been a lot of changes in terms of racial mix. Mm -hmm. mix. So we have a lot of Caucasians moving into yes. the community. As a matter of fact, I had a community conversation a few weeks you ago did, right? about <laughs> whites coming into the community and how we can live well together mm -hmm. as the landscape changes. But mm -hmm. we definitely mm -hmm. need cultural institutions still like the Shrine of, of Black yeah. Madonna. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, talk about the Shrine's role uh, now and how it might be different or the same. Uh, than it was at sort of the height of mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. its activity. Yeah, and so the mission is it will always continue to be what it is, yeah. and, and and that is, you know, self determination mm -hmm. for our community mm -hmm. uh, and the people that live within the community, uh, but also creating a space that we can be unapologetically who we are mm -hmm. as, as as African Americans. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we have always been a self-sustaining institution. We've never went out and, and sought grants. Mm -hmm. And that was always important to us because then we could say whatever it right. is we needed to say. And the community could come into the space and organize in a way that it needed to organize in order to achieve self-determination as a people. And so, you know, it was sustainable, sustainable on its own economically. Uh, the community was always supported it, um, even when, you know, black culture wasn't a trend, we existed. <laughs> right. um, in fact, I would, I would argue that we created the trend and made it popular and made it normal. Yeah. Um, you know, when we first opened up, it was new, it was a novelty, our ability to exist over the last, you know, better part of the last 50 years um, was a statement about our commitment to, to making our culture the norm. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, you are working, as I said, in a number of different spaces trying to sort of maintain this, this city and, and its institutions mm -hmm. and breathe new life into, uh, into spaces that have gone dark. Uh, talk about how important that work is in different parts of the city. I mean, you guys seem to be everywhere these days. <laughs> yeah, Steve, I think we have to continue to strive to make our communities walkable. Mm -hmm. We have to create buildings and places that are inviting to all. And so we're looking forward to bringing that kind of life to the, to the shrine, mm -hmm. uh, making the building very inviting, open, transparent, so people will feel welcome to come in and, and engage. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That, that's the goal. Yeah. Yeah, um, the the the, com the conversation that you had in Russell Woods yes. uh, about about race was interesting to me because uh, when my grandparents moved our family to that uh, that neighborhood in the fifties, they were one of the first black families mm -hmm. ever to live in Russell Woods. Mm -hmm. By the time I was born in nineteen seventy, uh, it was almost all African American. Right. Now it seems like uh, it's going to change again. I mean, this is kind of a cycle, I think, in, in Detroit and in neighborhoods. Yes, it has changed quite a bit. And again, you know, earlier you mentioned about we're not saying we don't want you here. Mm -hmm. And that's what the conversation wasn't about. You right. know, we weren't saying we don't want you here. But just come in and really be fully invested in the community. Don't just live here, but engage one another, not just people who look mm -hmm. like you. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. right. Well, and, and the shrine is mm -hmm. one of the places that people ought to, ought to get to know, exactly. regardless of their cultural background. Right? And you know, it, it, you know, culture is a broad term, yeah. right? And, and so the inger, intermingling of cultures mm -hmm. and, and having conversations and, and having a safe place and space to have those conversations mm -hmm. is important. And, I, and that's what we have historically been and will continue to be as we reprogram the space to, to make it more accessible. You know, just this past weekend, speaking of you know, something actually that was germane to what we did historically, mm -hmm. uh, there was a discussion um, with an attorney around uh, social justice and environmental justice. Mm -hmm. uh, ben Crump, I uh, think yeah. it was, who came sure. to town. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, not only 
is it important for him to have a book signing in a space, but to have the larger conversation, yeah. uh, you know, around social justice and its intersection with the environment. Uh, and as you know, he went to Flint, sure. um, and yeah. they, they did some some rallies and organizing in Flint around this this very issue. Yeah. And so having those conversations mm -hmm. about how to be inclusive, mm -hmm. uh, having a safe place to have those conversations, having conversations about larger issues yeah. that are impacting our community uh, is, is really what we yeah. are about and will continue to be about going yeah. forward. All right. Well, congratulations on, Thank you. Uh, on Thank the project you. and thanks for coming. Sure. Our Pre pleasure. Appreciate Thank it. You. Thank you. Appreciate the